Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Rogers. It's so nice to see all of you today. Uh, today we're going to share a story together, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, a pretty big word that I know some of my students have heard me use before, but I'm not sure if Mrs. Horan and Ms. Medeiros have, and that word is comprehension. Hmm. I wonder what that word might mean. What do you think that word might mean? Comprehension. That word means when we understand and can kind of make sense what, about what we're reading about. So that we can really give details about it and we understand what the story is about and we're even able to kind of say what the story is about in our own words. So today we're going to share a story and it's called Peter Rabbit. And the reason I chose this story is because I know Easter's coming up soon and some of you might celebrate it. And I thought, what a great choice to share with the children, especially because it's about a rabbit. So today we're gonna to listen to this story and it's a narrative story, which means it's just written for fun, but it's also a classic. And that means that this story was written a long time ago and it's been around for people to enjoy for a very, very long time. When Mrs. Rogers was little, I enjoyed this story with my family, so I thought that you might like hearing it too. So you might see behind me, we have our diamond. Now this is something I use in my class when we talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end of a story. So as we're reading today, I want you to think really carefully and listen really carefully to see if you can remember some details from the beginning of the story. And as we go through, I want you to see if you can remember some details from the middle of the story. That's where a lot of the action happens in a story. And then I want you to see if you can remember some details about the end. And this is a good way to collect all your thoughts about a book. Okay, so we'll take a look at this a little bit later. But right now, let's get to reading. So this is called The Classic Tale of Peter Rabbit. And it was published, it's written by Beatrix Potter and illustrated by Charles Santor. And it was published by Applesauce Press. And a publisher is the person or the company that puts all the books together for us to be able to enjoy. So here goes, oh, here's a little picture of Peter. I wonder if that's going to tell us a little bit about something later on in the book. Okay, so I'm going to read and then I'll show you the pictures. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. Let me see if I can do it together. How's that? Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They live with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put into a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. I wonder what mischief means. What do you think mischief might mean? Yeah, don't get into trouble. I'm going to go out and I'm going to trust that you guys can do the right thing. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and he squeezed under the gate. That's exactly what his mom told him not to do. First, he ate some lettuces and some French beans and then he ate some radishes. And then feeling a little sick, he went to look for some parsley Parsley can make your belly feel better when you're not feeling well. But round the end of a cucumber frame, 
Who should Peter meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop, thief! Stop, thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes amongst the cabbages, and the other shoe among the potatoes. Oh boy. So now he's running. He's very scared and he's lost his shoes. After losing them, he ran on all four legs and went faster so that he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately run into a gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons and it was quite new. Peter gave him up himself up for lost. That means he thought, oh no, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get away. And he shed big tears, but his sobs were overheard by some friendly sparrows who flew to him in great excitement and implored him to exert himself. That means they said, no, Peter, you need to push really hard. You can get out, you can do this. Mr. McGregor came up with a sieve, which he intended to pop upon the top of Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket behind him. Peter rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been filled with so much water. Oh, now he's probably going to be cold and wet. But Mr. McGregor was after him in no time, and he tried to pop his foot upon Peter. Oops. Let me go back for one second, boys and girls. Oh, I was right. I thought I missed a page. But Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. Hmm, I wonder what that means, upsetting three plants. Take a look at that picture. When they're saying upsetting three plants, it doesn't mean that they're making them angry or sad. In this book, upsetting means that he knocked them over. Hmm. It's a little bit different than what we would hear. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. So he went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had not the least idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting inside that can. Remember, it had all that water in it. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him and Peter began to cry see his really big tears coming down. He's pretty upset. I bet you he's thinking, wow, I probably should have listened to my mom and not come to Mr. McGregor's garden. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. 
Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. Probably not a good idea for him to interact with the cat. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a hoe. Scratch, 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 scratch. Peter scuttered underneath the bushes, but presently as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon a wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing in the onion field. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. <gasps> this is it. He may be able to escape. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside of the garden. He did it, boys and girls. He got away. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for a scarecrow to frighten away the blackbirds. Now remember, Peter lost his jacket and his shoes in Mr. McGregor's garden. I wonder what his mom is going to think when he gets home. Peter never stopped running or looked behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and he shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. She wondered what he had done with his clothes. Hmm. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost. Peter was not very well during the evening. His mother put him to bed and made some chamomile tea, and she gave him a dose of it. One tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. And that's the end of Peter Cottontail. So I want you to think back a little bit. We know that Peter did some things he probably shouldn't have done. He didn't listen to his mom at the beginning of the story. And then he got into a lot of trouble at Mr. McGregor's garden. And towards the end of the story, when he finally made it home, he was too sick to join the family for supper. And he had to have just chamomile tea instead of enjoying everything that his brothers and sisters got to enjoy that mom had made. So if we think about our triangle, and what happened at the beginning of the story. Peter's mom was talking to her children about how she was gonna go out shopping, and she gave them a very important warning. I want you to think about what that important warning was. That's a detail from the beginning of the story. And then as the story goes on, we know that Peter ended up in Mr. McGregor's garden, and he wasn't supposed to be there and he ended up getting into quite a predicament. That means quite a little bit of trouble, boys and girls. And I want you to think of some things that Peter experienced or that happened to Peter when he was at Mr. McGregor's garden. Think about a watering can, think about his jacket and his shoes. Think about some of the characters that he met while he was here in the middle of the story. And then I want you to think about the end of the story, how it ended for Peter. We know that he made it home, but did he get to enjoy the same things that his brother and sisters did at the end of the story? So this is something simple that you can draw out on a piece of paper, just a special little diamond or rhombus shape, like we say when we're talking in math. And you want your green area to be the beginning of the story, your black area to be the middle, juicy details, all those fun things that happened in the middle. And then the red is going to be the end. And if you can do this with a grown up, I'd love to see one detail in each little spot of our, of our diamond. 
one thing from the beginning that you remember, one thing from the middle of the story that you remember, and one thing from the end of the story that you remember. And again, that's just something simple that you can draw out and write with a grown-up or special person at your house on a piece of paper. And if you'd like, you could take a picture of it and send it to Mrs. Rogers and Mrs. Horn and Miss Medeiros so they can see just what you remembered about the story today about Peter Rabbit, okay? I hope you enjoyed the story. I'd love to see some of your work. If you want to share with me and, and Mrs. Horan and Miss Medeiros, um, and if not, I'm just glad that you were able to hear a fun story and think about that beginning, middle, and end of the story. And as you read more books, boys and girls, I want you to think about that a little bit more, okay? I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Have a great day.